If you're watching this, then you are certainly no stranger to the Ticket to Ride series that has had many expansions and iterations. And at this year's Gen Con, we got to try out Rails and Sails, the newest standalone version of the game. Comes with a lot of new stuff. This time around, you're using boats in addition to trains. And there's also a double-sided board with some other features, uh, depending on which side you're playing on. Yes, there's the whole world, which is what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. And then there's the one that we actually got to try, which is the Great Lakes region. Right. Before we go, let's go into the little stuff we know about the whole world. Mm -hmm. It Unlike, I mean, like the real world, <laughs> it's, it takes in the fact that the world is round. So your paths actually wrap around the board. This is definitely very interesting because then you can almost go around that way as a track instead of just being locked into one area. Pac-Man style, mm -hmm. I like to say. <laughs> uh, there's also a tourism thing where with for your destination tickets, you want to get tourists It, it the rewards right places. you pretty much for taking a very specific route. Right. Uh, which, uh, fortunately, we didn't get to try out those things. We used the other side of the board, but... The boats were alone were enough of a new twist on the game that there's enough to talk about. So it's basic, more or less basic ticket to ride. If you're familiar with the game, you're building routes. But there are now train cards and ship cards, and you can pick from either on your turn. And certain routes, of course, if they're in the water, you can't put trains there. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You need ships. Uh, so that, just keeping track of those was a whole new yes. wrinkle. Uh, I would like to know, because... This is what almost made it even more enjoyable that we did play a five man game. All of us experienced Ticket to Ride. Uh, That's players. correct. So we were very easy. We all jumped right into it. But at the same time, we all agreed and recognized how s we would all get confused with boats and trains. There, I'm well. I I lost 19 <laughs> points because for about three turns, I was drawing trains and not thinking they were boats <laughs> or thinking they were boats. Uh, which was awful. But uh, overall, I mean, it was super fun. It was definitely, I, I, even once you're used to those things, more complex than no, the No, there definitely was. And, I mean, this is, of course, you know, we no one knew the map, so we're all trying to get used to finding the places. True, true. But there was definitely a very interesting mechanic. With, we noticed with the boats and trains. People, in the beginning, we were going heavy boats, and we went heavy trains, and then back to boats. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of trying really cool out the new see. stuff. There's also these harbors... Uh, which you kind of have to build. If you don't, you lose points. Everybody has three of them. You lose four points for each one you don't build. However, should they be? Should you build them on a? And this is what actually is really interesting. Yeah. But uh, on a starting or ending location of any of your tickets, they net you ten points per ticket that starts and ends there, up to thirty points. So uh, this this was really interesting because you know we were all used to normal ticket to ride, so. At the end of the game, people's scores kind of skyrocketed because of those harbors. Right, which was I think I actually unexpected was, to me. I got a lot from that. Yeah, but the two things that I think the thing that makes it interesting for me is I think one of the biggest dangers of Ticket to Ride are the single slot spaces where mm -hmm. there's only one route and usually one thing. That's what these are. I built and was prepared, preparing right. to build on one city. You snagged it <laughs> right, right early before. on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And which is really, and they're really hard to build because what you need is certain cards have anchors, and you need two boats and two trains with anchors on them of this all of the same color. Yeah, so it is. It can take you a while to find the right combination, and then there's also some of the boats are doubles, so they actually count as two boats for one card. This makes a lot of the boat routes really lucrative. You can for three cards get a six. Six uh, yeah, bigger lane, which is awesome. Fifty <laughs> points drop. Yeah, this really adds a, a bunch of dimensions. It was really fun to go back and forth and play, bent, sort of bounce around. Yeah, because because now you're not just thinking which colors oh. do I need. It's port. Which ones cards have port symbols? Which ones have double symbols? So much stuff going and on. And this thing actually, in the end, I think for probably makes the game a lot more enjoyable. Longest Road is gone. That's right. And to me, that actually works well with the port system because now when we were making tickets, it wasn't, I'm trying to make this long, weird, riding road. Uh -huh. I was, okay, I've got two tickets that start in Denver. This is what I want to keep yeah. and stuff. And I really like that mechanic a lot more because there, there, you weren't thinking as much like, oh, but if I go this way, it's six more. It's just, I got to get this city and done. Like it, if I control this. It frees up your strategy a lot. But at the same time, it makes it very interesting because it seemed, it seemed we all got tickets with Toronto. 
<laughs> we all went for Toronto. Yeah, that, yeah. there's always one place that's like, okay, everybody is over there. There was one that after four turns, I was like, every route there is blocked. <laughs> I just, it's just gone. Uh, so that, that was kind of sad. But yeah, I mean, it was super, super fun. We loved the original Ticket to Ride. And this was, I don't know if it would replace it, but it was kind of close. No, uh, I wouldn't say replace. Definitely close, because Ticket to Ride almost is like playing the... Uh, I wouldn't say simpler, but like you know the rules. It's just build it. This because of the and the longest road and stuff like this. I'm thinking it. You think differently. I'll have to think differently for both. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to see with the whole world because I will say the Great Lakes map seemed a lot more condensed. Mm -hmm. Probably because also we all apparently got tickets around Toronto and this southern, eastern southern board. So like when mm -hmm. I got my new tickets, all my tickets, I'm like, oh, these are all in the northwest. I'm taking all those. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. I like. I know when the game was announced, the world map is definitely the one that appeals to me more. I think that seems a lot more interesting. Uh, well, so I'm excited to try. Real, I'm sure if you have any knowledge or love in the Great Lakes, you'll love it. In particular, because I know one person's like, wait a minute, Quebec's here, or not Quebec? Um, like Montreal's Montreal. here, <laughs> Toronto's not on the map. No, it's here. That doesn't make sense. This is supposed to be in the center of them, you know. <laughs> right. Of course, they have to. Uh, sometimes and of course, you know the, the the Great Bear on there. The Great Bear. It's real. It's well. It's a good. It's an okay bear. Yeah. But overall, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, definitely, and also we should note we point this, but I don't think there's much to say. We saw the early uh, was it my first ticket? That's right, the ticket to ride my first, first journey, journey, which is the kids version. We saw the playing around. We didn't. The, it definitely is obviously made for your first uh, j ticket. <laughs> your, mean, first your first ticket. Your first ticket. Your first little ticket children. <laughs> but like, so definitely check that out if you have little kids. But this one really does bring. I think it doesn't feel like. Yeah, I think... Okay, it, we get another ticket to ride. You really do feel a whole new mechanic style. You're forced to play differently. I like it more than if... I think I played it, honestly, we're talking about how I can't even remember. I think I like it more than Europe, honestly. I, I think it well, adds enough to be that Yeah, level. I think that's one of the reasons I really liked... Um, cause I think and Dexter. Too, yeah, because I think they made the wild cards very interesting because that moves them. And they made a whole new mechanic in that. I'd love to see what they mess, have mess around in this. Mm -hmm. I think hypothetically they could. I don't know. But definitely this real... I think that's why I said it doesn't replace. It makes you think differently. Yeah. Yeah. If you like Ticket to Ride, it's a no-brainer. Oh. I think this is uh, another great entry in the series. We got plenty more Gen Con news coming, so you better stay up to date at Roll for Crit, at Twitter, as well as Facebook, Instagram, and just subscribing right here. And, of course, you can find us on our very own website, rollforcrit.com slash GenCon2016, for all our videos, photos, and more. Stay tuned.